For many years, our district meals consisted of almost 100% uh, processed foods. So we were looking to move to a more nutrient-dense, balanced diet. We know from research that a well-fed child learns better, is better behaved, and um, can perform better in the classroom. So when this was originally brought to us, we basically jumped at the chance to uh, create a, a sustainable project that could possibly be duplicated in other school districts along the way. You know, I think it's a natural evolution from the CATCH program that uh, we've been working on and we've had support from the hospital and the foundation with. So this is a way, I think, to get kids more interested in lunch They've always liked lunch period because it's not in the classroom, but, and it's their social time and they get to hang out, but you know, now maybe they're gonna like lunch because the food is a whole lot better. So if that's the case, then yeah, that's, that's worth doing. Everyone has been extremely on board uh, since the start. However, that said, um, you know, when you go from cooking uh, easy, almost convenience foods, to from scratch cooking, it's tough. You know, it's an entirely new way of thinking about providing school lunches and breakfast, we do that too. So if you look at something like, you know, as simple as serving pancakes, you know, last year we would have taken the frozen pancakes out of the freezer, warmed them up, thrown them on the kid's plate. Well, now the process is you have to find a source for eggs, flour, oil, baking powder, whatever goes into milk, whatever else goes into pancakes. And then you have to get them here and keep them fresh. Then you have to find a recipe and scale it up. And in the morning you're gonna serve pancakes, you've gotta crack, I don't know how many dozens of eggs, and you have to measure out all the ingredients, you have to mix them together, stir the batter, put that on the griddle into pancakes, and then cook the pancakes on the griddle, get them to the kids while they're still steaming hot. So it's an entirely different, more complicated, but worthwhile process. Obviously with uh, bringing in local foods, less processed foods, that's going to possibly increase um, some of our costs. Uh, we didn't want to start this project and increase our costs uh, substantially. So we do know that there is an upfront cost with new equipment, obviously. Um, we don't need as much equipment if we're doing processed foods versus actual scratch cooking. Um, so there was that initial investment, uh, but we just want to make sure that our participation rates, which is how we get reimbursed, uh, stay steady. And we are anticipating that they will increase um, over the year because of the uh, better quality foods that we're serving the kids. We could not have done this without significant financial support from the ALMH Foundation. Last year we were buying food, this year we're still buying food, except now it's fresh and locally sourced. So all the food is still coming out of our budget, but we didn't have the budget to uh, get the expertise that Chef Greg and the Beyond Green team are providing. So that has been significant and that came from um, support from the ALMH Foundation very, very grateful for that. Chef Greg and his team are great about bringing everybody to the table and by allowing all stakeholders to have a voice, uh, ultimately that'll be the reason that Lincoln 27 and beyond is so successful.